question 2. The compound stated here reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide to produce an alcohol. Name the starting compound. So name that compound here. What is it called? I recommend that you write out the compound, draw out the compound on a sheet of paper, and then attempt to name it. Sorry, not attempt to name it, right? What we do here is chemistry, so we're going to name it. We're not going to attempt to name it. We're going to do it. Let me get a pen or something and let's do it together. So let's see. Really and truly, you guys should have done this already. Just saying. What's the answer that you guys have? Interesting. <laughs> not, the, not just saying interesting. It, was something wrong? Was something actually wrong? What are the answers that we have so far? Go ahead. We're seeing an alt. We're seeing an alkene is present. Alright. Okay. Alrighty. Let's draw this compound and see what we're talking about. Let's start from the left and then move to the right. Okay. So, firstly, right, what's happening here? What's happening here? This is showing a carbon, right? with a hydrogen attached and on that carbon we have a CH3 group here my bad I need to fix this on that carbon we have two CH3 groups right isn't that what it's saying that's what I'm seeing there right as a hydrogen so we draw all of that we have a carbon there of those that right so that's attached to another carbon now i see a bromine so i'm assuming that there's a bromine there as well right and that carbon is also attached to another ch3 already and then another i see another ch2 right and then another ch3 And then I say a CH3. Is that not the answer? Is there something wrong? Should there be an alkene somewhere? Okay, what's the issue? So that Okay, so what I'm seeing here is what they have here now is CH three two. That's what they have. Right? And then a carbon. Then a hydrogen. And then another carbon right so what this is telling me you know is that this carbon is attached to this hydrogen this carbon and then two of these methyl groups that's what I'm seeing
Alrighty. So I can also see right C H well sorry C B R H C H three and then another carbon. Go ahead. What's the issue? Okay. Alrighty, so let's figure this out, right? So is should this be an alkene? And if it is supposed to be an alkene, how can we tell? How can that be so? I'm just waiting for you guys to come up with your own responses, what's happening here. Already, everything seems fine so far. So name the name the compound. You guys should be able to name that compound and state the type of reaction which takes place with the when the compound reacts with two hydroxide. What's happening there? <laughs> Do you guys understand what's happening here? What's the name of the compound? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, we end up with a compound called three bromo. This would be two methyl. One, two, three, four, five, six, hexane. Alrighty. The type of reaction that occurs with this, right? We have to note something. This is a tertiary halogen alkene. Therefore, this is a SN. What type of reaction is SN1 or SN2? What type of mechanism, rather? First of all, it's a substitution reaction. SN1 or SN2? I started counting from, let me use a different color, probably that is the weird thing. I started counting from here, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, I missed out a methyl group. I am out a metal here. So three, two, three, dimethyl. Well, no, that's what I have there. All right. Yeah. All right. So tertiary, so tertiary halogen alkene is SN one. Looking at SN one reactions, which is a substitution reaction. And look here now. They ask us to outline this SN one mechanism. Alright, so we know what are the characteristics of the SN1 mechanism. The first step is the rate determining step which produces the tertiary carbocation and then the second step is when the hydroxyl group attaches to produce the tertiary alcohol. You guys remember how to do that or you need me to do it? You don't need me for anything at this point. Alright, but let's do it. Let's do it together with the power of friendship. We shall complete these questions. Alright, so let's simplify all of that because I ain't not writing that. Um, to be a great chemist, you have to be very lazy. Alright, so let's look at this now. 
you have to find the most convenient ways of doing things. So this is BR. This is gonna be C three, four, five, six, seven. C three H seven. Over here is going to literally be what? Um, C three H seven again. Not necessarily, actually. All right. So let's look at it like this. You know that's what I'm going to do. You know C three H seven C three H seven, and then I'm gonna put this down here as that. Is this hexane one two three four five six? It is. It just looks weird, right? But I'm just drawing it out like this for the for simplification, all right? All right. This now, right? What will happen, we're going to have the electrons in this bond moving here, right? Showing the slow step, which is an equilibrium step, right? And what it's going to do now, that's going to produce our carbocation. So we're going to end up with a carbocation like this, attached to C3H7, um, CH7, CH3, right? And then we're going to have the... OH from the alcohol coming in like that and then we end up with the tertiary alcohol all right so we end up with OH C3H7 C3 CH3 C3H7 already so just looking at something like that, we end up with that alcohol. Already? That's what we're looking at. Please, please, please do not forget. We're talking about sodium hydroxide. Does show the regular reaction. Sodium hydroxide in equilibrium. Right? Because with the unit one chemistry, so we know stuff. Right? And then we have plus the OH ion. Right and your state symbols. Don't forget your state symbols. So show that you show how you get the OH first, and then you move into the reaction. Alrighty. State the reactants and conditions used convert benzene to nitrobenzene. How is it done? I asked you guys. I well, I went through that with you guys. So what is it? Conditions for the nitration of benzene. Anyone? Nitric acid? Concentrated sulfuric acid? What else you need? Around 50, well below 58 degrees Celsius. That's not Celsius. Why did it autocorrect to the wrong spelling of the word Celsius? What? All right, so I have that there. Oh, sorry, sorry. This must be the condition. Sorry, so it's literally citric acid. That's a condition below. Alrighty. So looking at that as well, that's fine. Alrighty. And then you must outline the mechanism for that. You guys know the mechanism for the nitration of benzene. Remember the mechanism that we asked that I asked you guys to provide. You guys need to show the reaction of nitric acid with sulfuric acid to produce a nitronium um, ion, or the, sorry, the nitride um, intermediate that then decomposes to give the nitronium ion, and then we need to find an how the nitronium ion attacks the benzene ring to destabilize it allowing for one carbon to become sp3 hybridized and then we have the release of a hydrogen to restabilize the molecule went through all of this you now hopefully you guys are able to do that you already i'm gonna leave that to you guys you guys should be able to do that here we have an entire reaction chain we have nitrobenzene to phenylamine 
right? Two, the benzene disonium chloride to produce this molecule. What's the name of this compound, compound E? Anyone? Do you know what is the name of compound E? Guys need to know these, you know. Wait, is this correct? Are you guys understanding what's happening? Alrighty, so hold on, let's complete this. Let me just complete this. Thin and concentrated HCl and then the reaction of the amine well that would be phenylamine to so let's see our benzene diazonium chloride Alright, so the thing is now what we need is practice now. That is really and truly what we need. So reaction two here, we're going to have HCl right, reacting with sodium nitrate NO2 nitrite rather to give us that reaction there. So I think what we need is practice. Let me see how long the rest of this question is. This is the reaction of phenols. Okay, so this question is going to go on for a while. So that's the end of that question. So let me complete this question and then we can pause and talk about what we need to go over. Alrighty? But what's happening here now? What do you need? You need a phenol. What else do you need for the coupling reaction? Nobody remembers what is necessary for the coupling reaction. Need some basic material, so the hydroxide may work for the coupling reaction. They didn't ask for the conditions, so we don't need to put the conditions per se. But the temperatures must be glacial. Alrighty? Below 10 degrees, 5 degrees thereabout. And then state the class of compounds to which A, E belong, right? Those are azo compounds used as dyes. Two marks. So I just wanted to go through these problem papers to give you guys a taste of what the chemistry in the two papers looks like, what it feels like, what the questions may come as. Right? So you guys need to go over these. Right, this is the reaction with the acyl halide. This is the reaction with generally bromine water. This is the reaction with what? Sorry, this is the reaction with acyl halide. What's this reaction up here? This is the reaction with sodium hydroxide or a base. Phenol with that. So we need to go over them. The, the observation here would be effervescence right and uh, oh did it wrong so let's just fix that right there effervescence right with a gas that gives a squeaky pop a pop sound right because that is hydrogen gas what is the reaction here? We're reacting with bromine, BR, BR2. The observation, decolorization. Right? What is also the issue, right? 
we have a brownish precipitate or yellowish precipitate being produced. No, it's not a um, it's an antiseptic smell rather. Antiseptic smell. Right? So we have an antiseptic smell being produced there. Alrighty. So really and truly this is what chemistry me too really looks like, you know, it's really all about in none of the case, right? You have to the acyl halide, let's say an acyl, let's call it an acyl chloride. Really doesn't matter. But I noticed in the at the first step it didn't give us a place to answer, so you never had to put the FBS into the squeaky pop. But that is really and truly what is happening there. Right? The answer here now we would just be a change in pH, right? It used to turn red lip um blue lip mustard, but it no longer does that. Alrighty? But that's really the end. So this is truly what module one compasses.